Okay, let's go ahead and figure out what the sine of 30 degrees is. Matter of fact, you don't even need a calculator to do this problem. And uh, here we have an angle. This angle is 30 degrees. We're trying to calculate the sine. Now, a lot of you uh, that are kind of new to trigonometry or you've never seen trigonometry before won't even know what this means. Are you, this, to a lot of people, this is the word sin. You might think it's a sin to do math. It's not a sin to do math. Math is fun, if you didn't know. But anyways, what we're going to be talking about here is an introduction, kind of like some basic concepts to trigonometry. All right, so intro to trig. I'm not going to cover everything about trigonometry, but this covers kind of the uh, some of the most fundamental concepts of trigonometry, and this is not that difficult. So don't be afraid of this word trigonometry. Like, oh, that's advanced math. There's no way I can understand. Just hold on one second. I'm going to explain this in a nice, easy way that you'll walk away saying, oh, awesome, I get this. Now, uh, here's the thing. If you think you know how to do this problem, put your answer into the comment section, but kind of justify it, right? Justify you get your answer. Certainly don't use a calculator. Um, you know, everyone can go into a calculator. By the way, if you do have a calculator handy, uh, with the exception of your cell phone, you'll see these buttons here on your calculator that look like this, S-I-N, that stands for sine, uh, cosine, and tangent. Now, if you are in what we call degree mode in your calculator, you simply just put in uh, 30, hit the sign button, and you'll get the right answer. So that's not what the whole point of this video is. Again, I want to give you some basic introduction to trigonometry. So anyways, uh, we're going to get to this in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades, and I'm telling you right now, you can be successful in math, and I really mean that. And I'm especially speaking to those of you that struggle in math. You can do well, okay, but what you need is great math instruction, clear, understandable, and comprehensive. So if you need help with your current math course, uh, some sort of special test that you might be uh, preparing for, things like the GED, SAT, ASVAB, uh, teacher certification exam, or homeschooling, check out my math help program. You'll find uh, a link to it in the description of this video. I have 100 plus different uh, math courses that um, you know cover all these various categories that will definitely help you out. Also, if you don't have excellent notes, well, I want to encourage you to start improving your notes. But in the meantime, you can use my notes uh, to study from. I'm going to leave links to those in the description of this video. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this. If you know the answer, uh, go ahead and put that into the comment section because I'm going to show you the right now, what is uh, the sine of 30 degrees? The sine of 30 degrees is uh, simply one half or 0.5. That's it. Not that difficult. I mean, it's not like a uh, you know crazy decimal or anything like that. It's just one half. So what does this mean? Why is it one half? Uh, I'm going to explain that here in a second. But first, let me give you a nice little happy face if you got this right. Matter of fact, I'll give you an A plus, any 100% and a few stars because... You understand basic trigonometry. Nice job. All right, let's get into this. All right, so in, trigono uh, in trigonometry, uh, now trigonometry in and of itself, that word means kind of like the study of angles, okay? When you first start learning about trigonometry, one of the main things you uh, first uh, study is something called trigonometric ratios, trigonometric ratios. And this word ratio Remember, um, or you may not remember this from algebra, a ratio is effectively a fraction. So what we're talking about is trigonometric fractions, or we're comparing two values here. And this goes to those uh, buttons I was talking about that are on your calculator, right? The sine, that's not sin, that's the sine. That's how we, uh, uh, it's spelled S-I-N-E, sine. Then we have cosine, and then we have tangent, okay? So these are the three main trigonometric ratios that you need to learn, sine, cosine, and tangent. Of course, we're going to be focused in on the sine in this particular video, but here I want to introduce a phrase. This phrase has been around for decades. Matter of fact, your grandparents, uh, you know, probably, uh, you know, had this phrase way back in whenever your grandparents were around, you know, maybe that was the 50s, 60s, 40s, whatever the case is, but we all learn trigonometry with some sort of basic phrase like this. And here is the phrase. It's, uh, it goes like, so ka toa. So ka toa. Now, um, 
A lot of you are probably saying, what are you talking about? So Katoa and trigonometry? Yes. Okay. So this is what uh, we're talking about. Okay. So, so okay, Ka and Toa are going to be uh, the nice little formulas we need for these trigonometric ratios. So before I tell you that, as you can see, I have, have this stuff written out right here. We need to look at a right triangle. So when you first start studying trigonometry, at least uh, with respect to these uh, trigonometric ratios, we look at this in terms of a right triangle. So here is a triangle, and it's right because this right here, that uh, little corner thing indicates that this is 90 degrees, because that's 90 degrees. So we have a lovely little triangle here. So uh, in uh, a right triangle, there's always the longest side. The longest side is always the opposite of that right angle. And it's this side right here, and there's a fancy name for it called the hypotenuse. Okay, this is the hypotenuse. It's always the longest side of a right triangle. Now, this right here happens to be an angle. So we'll call this angle, now this little term in uh, mathematics, we refer to this variable as theta. Okay, it's just a fancy Greek uh, letter, theta. But anyways, this represents this angle right here. Okay, now let's talk about this O and A. Now, this A is the adjacent side with respect to this angle. So I'm looking at this angle right here. Uh, the adjacent side is this side. Okay, now what does that word ad adjacent mean? Adjacent means right next to. Okay, that's basically what it means. So the side that's right next to this angle that's forming this angle is right here. This is the adjacent side. And then what's the side opposite? It's this side right here, this O. Okay, so when you're looking at an angle, we have to kind of basically think of it in these three things. We, You want to be looking at what side is the adjacent, what side is opposite of that angle, and then in terms of a right triangle, there's always going to be the hypotenuse, the longest side. So we're going to go and label the adjacent side A, the opposite side O, and the hypotenuse H. Okay, so now we can go ahead and use our lovely little phrase here, so katoa. And let's go ahead and define what the sine is, okay? So in terms of a trigonometric ratio, the sine of this angle, okay, this angle theta right there, is equal to this so, right? So sine is opposite over uh, hypotenuse. So this is just a little mnemonic phrase, just a little memory device. So sine is equal to opposite over the hypotenuse, uh, O divided by H. So we had these values of this triangle, we just simply take the whatever the length of this uh, side is right here and divide it by this side, and we would get the sine. And of course, that's what we're going to be doing in this particular problem. But let's go ahead and just talk about these other two trigonometric uh, ratios. So the cosine is when you take the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. And of course, we can remember it with our little so katoa, so cosine adjacent divided by uh, hypotenuse. And then the tangent is the opposite over the adjacent, okay? So the opposite over the adjacent. So when you have a right triangle and um, you have this angle, okay, that you're looking at, and you have all the lengths of the right triangle, you can find the sine, cosine, and tangent. Just follow your little so katoa formulas. And that's what a trigonometric ratio is. Now, trigonometry is so, so powerful, okay? There's um, so many problems uh, different type of problems that you can solve using basic right triangle trigonometry. Um, this is not the video for me to kind of get into this, but this is powerful stuff. Okay, power, power, powerful, powerful stuff. So, um, you know, you might be thinking, why do I want to do this? Well, again, there's a lot of problem solving applications uh, that you can do uh, with trigonometry. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and just focus in on what the sign of 30 degrees is. So here is our problem. Okay. Here is a triangle, and uh, uh, when we first looked at this, we just had this angle, okay? But now we're like, okay, I'm going to think of this angle within a right triangle. That's what you want to do when you're trying to determine what the sine is. Put that angle, instead of this angle like this, 30 degrees, uh, think of this in terms of a right triangle, okay? So we'll form a right triangle where this is 30 degrees, and now we need to think about, all right, uh, great, you just told me the Sokotoa stuff, and I know it's going to be the opposite over the hypotenuse, but I have no information, okay? I don't know what the adjacent is. I don't know what the 
uh, opposite is. I don't know what the hypotenuse is. So what do I do? Well, I'm going to tell you what you do. There's two special uh, right triangles that you need to really, really know uh, in geometry and uh, mathematics. Okay, it's certainly trigonometry, and I'm going to sketch them out right now. Okay, all right. So the first is a 45, 45. Of course, this is a 90 degree right triangle. The next is a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. Okay. So in uh, 45, 45, the sides here are always the same. Okay, I don't know. I'm going to try to uh, make this a little bit more clear. I know that my, it's kind of scrunched up here. But basically, the sides are the same. So let's say this is 2. This is 2. And the hypotenuse is always going to be uh, whatever uh, the sides are, which are, the, are going to be the same in a 45, 45, times the square root of 2. Okay? And we can see that using the Pythagorean theorem. So 2 squared plus 2 squared is going to be equal to the um, hypotenuse squared, or c squared. And so 2 squared and 2 squared, this is going to be 4 plus 4 is equal to c squared. I know I'm kind of uh, taking a little bit of time here, but let's just review this. So c squared is equal to 8. So what is uh, c squared is equal to 8. When I take the square root of both sides, c is going to be equal to the square root of 8. And that's going to be the same as 4 times 2. That's the square root of 8. I could take that 2 out. It's Kind of break it up this way, square root of 4 times the square root of 2, that's going to be 2 square root of 2. Okay, so instead of doing all this work, every single time we encounter a 45, 45, 90 degree right triangle, all we have to do is just take whatever our side is and multiply it by the square root of 2. You see, this is why you want to know these nice little shortcuts. So there's another one for the 30, 60, 90 um, right triangle, and this is how this goes, okay? So let's say our base is 1, okay? Uh, the hypotenuse, which is this side, is always double the smallest side. So if this is 1, this is going to be 2. And then this side right here is going to be whatever the small side is times the square root of 3. So that's going to be 1 times the square root of 3. And I can write this as a nice little formula like so. Let me actually do that now. If this is x, this is 2x, and this is x times the square root of 3. Okay, so you may or may not have uh, seen these formulas, uh, but you need to know these special right triangles. I've done a lot of different videos on my channel about these uh, triangles, but if you're going to get into trigonometry, um, you got to know these special right triangles, 45, 45, 90, 30, 60, 90, and that's really going to be the key in order to unlock this problem. Okay, so let's go ahead and figure this thing out now. Let me actually erase this so we can focus in on the work. Okay, so... We're saying, okay, 30 degrees, a right triangle, this is 60 degrees because uh, the sum of the angles uh, in a triangle is 180 degrees. So if this is 90, that's 30. Well, we take that minus 180, this is 60 degrees, so 30, 60, 90. So we have to be very careful here. Uh, and this is maybe a little, a little bit uh, larger than 30 degrees, my sketch, but it's uh, certainly not 60 degrees, but I think... Um, it represents this, man, eh, okay, right? So what's the smallest side? Well, this is the smallest side. So let's just put that as 1, okay, as a value. And then we'll double that 1. That's the hypotenuse, okay? So here's our smallest side. It's 1. Our largest side is a hypotenuse. It's double the smallest side. That's 2. And then this adjacent side is going to be the smallest side, which is 1 times the square root of 3 or the square root of 3. Okay, so now we have a uh, 30, 60, 90 uh, right triangle with the sides here, okay, the special right triangle. So now what we just need is the ratio. So here is our 30 degree angle. And so now we're going to figure out what the sine of 30 degrees is. We need the, uh, the opposite. So what's the opposite of 30 degrees? One is. That's the length of this side. So that's going to be the opposite. And then we need the hypotenuse, which of course is 2. So the sine of 30 degrees is equal to 1 half or 0.5. And if you go into your calculator, uh, you will see, you put in 30, hit the side button, you'll get 0.5, uh, which of course is the same as 1 half. Now, uh, one little tiny detail, when you start learning trigonometry on your calculator, you have a mode button, okay, a mode button. And you can change how your calculator measures angles. Uh, so be careful with this. There's a degree mode, 
and there's something called a radian mode. Okay, uh, radiance is another extremely important way to measure angles, and it doesn't uh, involve the degree notation. It's something entirely different. But when you're working uh, with uh, degrees and radians, oftentimes what students will do, they'll they'll be switching back and forth between these modes, and they'll be in radian mode, and then they go do a problem in degrees, and they don't realize they're in radian mode, and they get a, a completely different answer, which is the wrong answer. So be very careful of that if you want to play around with your calculator and uh, you know kind of follow through with this to actually see that sine of 30 degrees is equal to one half. But uh, this is a fairly, you know, uh, basic introduction to some of the things that you will start learning in trigonometry. And, of course, you'll learn more and more advanced stuff. So if this uh, interests you, or if you're studying this right now, let me give you a couple suggestions. One, I have a ton of videos on my YouTube channel that cover some basic uh, right angle trigonometry. But I would point you towards uh, two of my courses in my Math Help program. My geometry course, I cover uh, right angle trigonometry, basically this kind of stuff. But if you really, really want to learn advanced trigonometry, you need to check out my pre-calculus course because uh, that's where we really get into some really cool advanced mathematics. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.